Okay, we're going to try again here with Roger. Roger, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, thanks. I'm Roger Clarice. I'm Senior Director of Product Marketing in the Zen Server Group. And we're going to take a look at Zen Center and Citrix Zen Server. All right. So here's our friend Zen Center. It's the key to managing Zen Server systems and providing a server virtualization platform and a key to dynamic data center. You actually don't need to use Zen Center, but it's very convenient and powerful. You can manage Zen Server using a command line or even integration with web services and language bindings through our API. So you can integrate it into our management team. But here's the front door. And I guess the drawings will continue. Go ahead. I have two servers here in a pool. And so I have a pool called the Zen App Zen Server Demo Pool. Two servers, Zen 3, Zen 4. Each of them currently has its own storage, DVD, local. Uh, there's some shared storage, both on an intelligent NetApp storage system and some NFS. And I have some virtual machines on each. Most of them are powered on. One of them is powered off. And the system is very easy to go from zero to Zen server in 10 minutes. We say 10 minutes to Zen. And quick install, I load this on a PC. And now I go to my connect to my server, and I want to create a new virtual machine. I have these templates that are installation instructions for many common Linux and Windows operating systems, plus a couple of templates that are optimized for performance for Citrix Zen app in a virtual environment. I can also take pre-configured pre stacks of, store, of software from the OS to my patches and applications, prepare them for cloning, and then use that as a means to deploy really quickly. So I'm going to take one of those, keep the insanely clever name we get by default here. I can either pick a machine that I want to run it on, or I can let the environment automatically pick a good machine that has enough resources. I can size it anywhere from one to eight virtual CPUs, anywhere from, uh, well, much lower than this, but I default here to 256 meg. I can go up to 32 gigabytes. And I configure the storage. I allocate it on storage systems. I define networks. The network can either be local uh, between virtual machines on the same machine, or it can be connected to an outside NIC. It can be connected to a bond, and it can be connected to a VLAN. So I'm going to go ahead and start this machine automatically. And over in the tree here, well, at the bottom, you'll we'll see it's cloning and preparing that virtual machine. And as soon as that's done, it'll show up somewhere around here. And as soon as its networks are configured, it will pop up and start running on a machine. So here it is, and when I connect to it, you'll notice it's coming up. All right, excellent, Roger. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks.